the Single Mom Success Podcast, episode 43. And we spend a proportionate amount of our time dealing with people who don't want to play nicely together, little short, crazy people who don't want to play well together. So I'm fairly certain Congress would be like a piece of cake. (laughs) I've always said a single mom should be president. This is the Single Mom Success Podcast, where we cover all the glorious mess that is life as a single parent and how you can navigate through to become the best version of yourself and how to live the life you desire. Do you want to get weekly email reminders of your awesomeness? Head on over to the singlemomblog.com to sign up today. Now, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to today's Single Mom Success Podcast. I hope things are going fantastically for you. Um, so gosh, a lot's been going on the last uh, few weeks. Um, let's see, last month my boys turned 16, which is, um, scary and, uh, makes me feel old, but, um, we had a, a really good birthday for them. We just, um, you know, hung out and they didn't really want anything extravagant. I think it's kind of cool with, um, uh, <clears throat> boys, they're, they're not as into the 16, like sweet 16 isn't really a thing for them, right? So it's it's a lot easier for boys, I think, when 16 rolls around than for girls. Um, I never quite understood why 16 was such a big deal uh, for girls. Like it just didn't, I, I never really kind of got that. I mean, my parents threw me kind of like a surprise barbecue type of thing for my 16th birthday, which was, was cool. Um, but it wasn't anything like, you know, like, of course, nothing like you see on TV where it's like these huge parties and, you know, um, but uh, um, it was nice. It was a kind of a, a more elaborate birthday party than I normally got. Um, so it was cool in that aspect, but um, it really wasn't extremely overdone. You know what I mean? It was kind of cool. It was the first and only surprise party I've ever had, um, but uh, it, it was it was fun. So we had that and then... Um, Let's see, just went out to dinner with the boys, and then, um, other than that, everything else has been pretty normal. Oh, and my van committed mutiny. Um, that's something we've been dealing with. So, um, (laughs) um, we, I I have a, a Chrysler Town and Country. I worked really, really hard to clean up my credit, um, and, uh, get myself in a position financially and credit wise where I could afford to um, get a newer vehicle than what I had. And so I was able to finally do that. And I got a 2009 Chrysler Town and Country, which I loved and the kids loved because there's TVs in it. And it's, you know, it's a nice van. It's it's really good quality car. Um, but uh, a couple weeks back, it started acting funny and, and acting like it didn't want to shift out of third into fourth or back down from third into second or first, like it didn't, it like got stuck in third, um, <clears throat> which was very concerning. And so I took it to a couple of different mechanics, hoping that it was just a simple fix. Maybe my transmission needed to be flushed or something like that. I paid for a couple of minor procedures to be done on my vehicle. And no, it's, uh, they, they're looking at uh, probably my, my uh, transmission needing to be completely rebuilt, which sucks because it's going to cost about $4,000. So that was definitely not a fun thing. And so currently my car is in the shop getting rebuilt. And um, I actually started a GoFundMe campaign for that because um, while we could potentially pay for it, I could potentially pay for that repair. It would mean that my rent wouldn't get paid this month and food wouldn't get bought and lights wouldn't get paid for and stuff of that nature. So um, so I'm trying to get uh, as much help as I possibly can for that, um, which is it's a unique experience for me because I've never done a GoFundMe. I've actually, I've contributed to them. I've I've donated money to people, um, you know, people who lost their homes. In, uh, in Colorado, we had floods a couple of years back where people lost a lot of their um, belongings and, and things for their homes. Um, we've had fires um, where people lost their homes. Um and uh, I have a, a really good friend who is going through cancer, and I've donated to her uh, cancer fund when I had money for it. And so I've, I've donated. I've just never um, done one myself. And that's probably because I have a really difficult time asking for help. I don't like doing it. Um, I've always sort of had this mental block when it came to asking for help, even though I tell people all the time you should ask for help if you need it. I really suck at it, right? Like I, and here's the crazy part. I can identify the fact that it's important to ask for help, right? 
I know it's important to ask for help, that you shouldn't have to always go it alone, and that it's important to be able to reach out to people and have support because it's it's critical for us, right? Especially single parents. Um, but I totally suck at it, and I acknowledge that I suck at it, and it's really difficult for me to do. Um, and it seems crazy, and it seems stupid, and I don't really know why. And I think part of it, um, you know, if I was to sort of self-diagnose is maybe um, I'm, I fear judgment. Like, I don't want people to say, oh, well, you know, she can't, you know, I don't want people to think I can't do it, right? I, and so I guess maybe it's not even a fear of judgment. Maybe it's pride, right? I'm too, like, I'm too proud to ask for help. Maybe that's what it is. Um, who knows? But it's it's been always been really difficult for me to ask for help. Like, I will wait until things become absolutely dire, can't make it it's like the worst possible situation and scenario before I go okay I need help right I will wait until like my house is about to burn down before I say okay maybe the fire department should come and and bail me out right like and and it's stupid right because I could very likely get help before it becomes such a critical like emergency Um, But I always want to try and fix it myself. I always want to try and do it myself. And it's very difficult for me to admit and say that I can't. And so it's definitely something that I've been working on and I'm continuing to work on. And so this GoFundMe page and and the other part of it is, is I don't want to feel like that that person that's always got their hand out. You know what I mean? I've never wanted to be that person. And I hate feeling like that person um, because I, I can do so much on my own. So, um, and it's pretty funny because it, and and it even boils down to like when it comes time to ask for help from my family with my kids. Like I told my uncle the other day, um, you know, I will look for anyone else to help me with the kids before I ask you guys, because I feel like I'm intruding in your life. I feel like I'm asking too much by asking you to help me with the kids. And he goes, God, he's like, well, you should probably get over that, huh? <laughs> and uh, and it seems simple, and it's true. I I really should. I shouldn't be afraid to ask for help when I need it. But it's 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 definitely a struggle for me. So putting up this GoFundMe page was very hard for me. Um, I cried through part of it because I felt crappy that I was even doing it. But at the same time, you know, I've got to practice what I preach, and it's important if I tell people, um, you know, hey, you need to ask for help if you need it. It's there. Um, and then not do it myself, right? That's crappy. And, and it's not okay. So so I did put up a GoFundMe page. Um, and I've had a couple family members donate to it. So that's been nice. So, you know, and, and really, I'm not even necessarily expecting to get the entirety of, um, you know, the cost of my new transmission paid for. But um, even just a little bit of help towards it is something that helps, right? That's that's money that instead of paying for the transmission, now I can get groceries, <laughs> Right. So there is that. Um, And it sucks because, you know, I I have reached a point where things are are real steady for me and my family and we don't have any struggles like that. But it's this one big thing. I don't think anybody ever expects to have a four thousand dollar mechanic bill. Right. And that's not something that you really plan for. Um, I don't ever expect to have, you know, large medical bills, right? You know, and so while things are good and stable financially for me and my family, that stability is based on a pretty stringent budget. Like there's not a ton of wiggle room in my budget, um, you know, for a major expense. You know, I have enough money to cover everything and put a little bit of a, of it aside. So, I mean, I do have a little bit in savings, but not a ton um, because as a single and as a single parent, you um, I don't always have a lot of money to put aside to save, right? And lately, in the last couple of months, my daughter has had, like, she's had, like, a fundraiser and field trip, and my boys have had stuff required. Like, it's the beginning of the school year, so I feel like I'm paying for everything already. (laughs) So a lot of money has gone out towards, you know, the kids and their school and all the stuff going on. Um, And so that's taken a little bit out of the savings that we have set aside. So, um... So yeah, it was just definitely not something I was planning. So I'm hoping that, you know, the GoFundMe will have a little bit of, of a, give me a little bit more of a, a breathing room when it comes to this car thing. So, um, and, uh, you know, I, and I put the link in my blog post in um, on the singlemomblog.com uh, for this podcast. So if any of you are feeling generous, it would be greatly appreciated, obviously, um, but uh, not something 
I expect, but um, I just brought it up as sort of a update on what's been going on and kind of a, a new thing for me to, you know, step out of my comfort zone and say, hi, complete strangers, I need help. And I, it sucks. I really don't like it at all. So, um, I don't know. So hopefully everything will be okay. And I'm still crossing my fingers that the worst case scenario that my mechanic gave me is not, in fact, the true scenario. Because the $4,000 that he quoted me was like 36 something with tax, right? So pretty much like 400 bucks, right? Um, or 4,000 bucks. I wish it was only 400. Um, but that was the worst case scenario. So I'm praying and crossing my fingers and putting all the positive energy out to the universe that I can, that it's not going to be that expensive, that it's going to be something simple. They're going to take apart my transmission and go, oh, look, here, it's just this solenoid and that needs to be replaced and we'll put it all back together. And now it's only half of what we quoted you. That would be very nice. (laughs) I would really like that so much. (laughs) So I'm hoping. Um, And in which case it will not kill me uh, financially. So, um, but it's, it's crazy how those simple things, right? Just those, those things that you don't expect and those things that just come out of nowhere can totally throw your, you know, little delicately balanced world into a tailspin. Um, and as single parents, that's, you know, that's a hard thing sometimes for us to, to deal with. So other than that, um, things have been going pretty well. Um, Let's see, what are the things that we could talk about as far as topics for today's podcast? Um, What's been going on? There's, uh, oh, there's politics. That's always a fun one. Um, I got to say, I can't wait until November 8th rolls around. I really am, I'm so tired of the political scene right now. And this year, I mean, it's always kind of an ugly ordeal when the presidential election rolls around, but this year seems like 10 times, 100 times worse than any years past that I can recall. I mean, it's gotten ugly. And I think the biggest reason for that is the Donald Trump candidacy. Um, and I'm not here to tell you who to vote for or who you shouldn't or that you're wrong or right for believing and voting for any particular candidate. Um, I personally do not like Donald Trump. I do not feel he's a good fit for our country. I will be voting for Hillary Clinton, not because I feel that she's so star-spangled awesome that she's the best possible thing for our country, but uh, because I think that a Donald Trump presidency would be absolutely all-encompassing devastation for our country. I really do. Um, And uh, so, but... But regardless of what I feel on it, the the reason I think that it's become sort of the shitstorm that it has, um, more above and beyond uh, what it used to be or what it has been in the past, um, you know, campaign wise, is because it's Donald Trump, right? It's it's sort of taken on this reality show vibe that I kind of detest. Like I don't want my political arena to to be a reality show. It's not something where I feel it should be treated in that way. I don't feel it should be this sort of like, I'm going to make up whatever I want to make up about the other candidate and I'm going to scream it as loud as I can into a podium until all of my little, you know, brainwashed followers start repeating it. Like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the way that it's been handled. I don't like the fact, and I even more so don't like the fact that all of the people following him and advising him are just encouraging that kind of behavior. It's it's scary to me. It, it's really scary to me because I think without somebody, you know, and even if I, I thought that he was a very brilliant businessman or even if I thought, I mean, somewhere there has to be some form of intelligence and responsibility and ability in order for him to have gotten as far as he has in, in business and in life and have the kind of money that he says he has. So I know that that's there somewhere, right? That acumen has to be there. The, the problem is, is that I can't get past his mouth to see it, to hear it, to, 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 I, I can't, I can't get past the, game show, reality TV bullshit that comes from him, that persona. Um, And so I have a really hard time getting past that. Like, 
last election cycle with Barack Obama and Mitt Romney, um, I, I did not like Mitt Romney. I thought he was pompous. I thought he was arrogant. I thought he was um, just completely out of touch with what the middle class and lower class people were experiencing and going through. Um, and I just, you know, I didn't agree. But here's the thing. I didn't think him a fool. I didn't think that he was this boorish, brainless guy. Um, I didn't agree with what he said. A lot of stuff upset me, things that he said. Um, but it was never me thinking, my gosh, this man is absolutely racist. He's bigoted. He's. It was never that lack of respect, necessarily, that I have for Donald Trump. Um, I just didn't agree with his policy and I didn't agree with the way he saw things, right? And that's how politics are. That's how the world is. But um, I just, I can't, can't get behind Trump. And here's the thing, and this is kind of what <clears throat> I think this podcast is going to be about. And not necessarily politics, because I don't, I don't really want to necessarily dive down into that because it tends to bring out the worst in people. And I know that it definitely brings out, I'm very passionate about <laughs> how I feel about uh, Donald Trump. Um, <clears throat> but more so perspective. That's kind of like what, that's kind of the main focus of this podcast. And you'll see this a lot in, in, well, pretty much anywhere, but in things like politics and religion and, you know, all the various different things, parenting and pretty much everything, every aspect in your life is built around perspective, your perspective, your point of view, um, and, and how you see things. And this is something that's very important to remember when parenting, co-parenting, dealing with other people. Um, and it's also very hard. It's a very hard thing to, to deal with. Um, perspective is something that we have, how we view things. But our perspective and our viewpoints are created by our experiences, our experiences in our lives, right? And my experiences being wholly and completely different in many levels from your experiences will give me a different point of view and perspective than you, right? So from my perspective and my experiences in my life, I view a Donald Trump presidency as, as bad, right? I can't get behind what he says. I don't agree with what he says. I don't like the way he regards women. I don't like the divisiveness that he's set up in his campaign. Um, I don't like some of the very bigoted racist things that have come out of his mouth. Um, there's many things that bother me about what he said and how he handles himself um, and a lot of just sort of the glaring hypocrisy of what he says versus what he does. For example, you know, uh, recently, you know, there's, there's on record, he's said on many, many different occasions, how it's horrible that, you know, millionaires don't pay their taxes and it's not fair and they should be paying them and blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't like it. But yet recently we find out that in his tax returns, he didn't pay taxes, right? And um, he did so legally, he didn't do anything wrong. But you can't claim to be against something while doing it at the same time. That's the hypocrisy, right? Um, you know, but everybody suffers from that. Everybody does it. I tell my kids, you know, we tell our kids don't do things that we ourselves do, right? <laughs> I tell my kids constantly, stop swearing. And I swear like a freaking sailor, right? So it's, it's, the hypocrisy is always going to be there. Um, but on the flip side, I'm not running for president, right? Um, however, I have always said that we need a single mom to be president because come on, like, a single mom in the presidency, first of all, we spend a per great proportionate amount of our time um, balancing budgets, saving money, figuring out how to make money work for us, figuring out the best way to afford to do pretty much anything, right? We know how to make a dollar stretch, right? I'm pretty sure we could probably come in there and start hammering out a, a pretty sufficient budget. Um, we... <laughs> <laughs> and we spend a proportionate amount of our time dealing with people who don't want to play nicely together, little short, crazy people 
who don't want to play well together. So I'm fairly certain Congress would be like a piece of cake. <laughs> I've always said a single mom should be president. Um, but despite the levity, um, I sit there and, and, and that's my viewpoint on, on things that happened with Trump and things that happened in the, in the election. It was the same with Romney. Again, my viewpoint with Romney was different. Um, but I've also, I voted on both sides of, of the aisle. I voted Democrat and I voted Republican. And I think one time I voted independent. Um, but that's from my perspective. And I've spent a good part of my time trying to figure out, and you know, and I've even asked people, I was like, can you please tell me what it is that that makes you believe or what, what makes you think that a Trump presidency would be good? What do you see that I'm not seeing because I'm not seeing it, right? And and so I've asked that as a legitimate question, not as, as to start a fight or to cause problems or to be, you know, a jerk about it. It's a legitimate question because I realize that my viewpoint causes my perspective, like my perspective is different than someone else's. I know people and have people that I've seen that support Trump and because of their experiences and what they've dealt with in life and how they've, you know, gone through this world, what, what's happened to them, they look at Trump and see something different than what I see, right? And we're looking at the same person, right? It doesn't, he, he's the same guy. It's not, I mean, it's not a trick. It's not, you know, uh, uh, an illusion. It's not like I see this one guy and you see this other guy. It's the same person, right? Same with Hillary. With Hillary, and again, I don't think she's Star Spangled Awesome. They both have controversy. They both have things that are not great, okay? Um, but... I don't see this evil incarnate that other people see, right? <clears throat> so it's different. And it's all about perspective. I can't see in Donald Trump what other people see in him. Same guy, but they view him differently. Now, whether it's because, you know, people think, you know, well, we, we're so tired of politicians and we want somebody who's a straight shooter and he just says it like it is. <clears throat> and that's all well and good. And to a point, I can understand that. I can understand that. Politics has become this like cesspool of just, it's become such a just bastardized, horrifying monster of a, of a thing from what it was originally created to be, right? Our original government and our original forefathers, it's its become very corrupt. A lot of it is due to the very rich people and rich corporations like Donald Trump who have been allowed to take control of our political system, of our government, right? The second we allowed those co corporate sponsors to start dictating who and what bills got passed and who, what senators backed what play and all of that... That's when everything went sideways and it became an absolute nightmare because no longer were we working for the good of the people, they were working for the good of the corporation that paid them the most money. And that's that bullshit. And I'm not okay with that. So um, I'm for anybody who wants to overturn Citizens United because I think, you know, everybody's like, oh, I want government out of my, my life, right? I want less government in my life. I want less money in government, right? That's what I want. Um, so I get that people want to, like they see things differently with Trump because they've, they've dealt with politicians and they feel, okay, maybe if we get something different, maybe if we get this new person in who's not a politician and who just talks off the cuff and says what he thinks and is a straight shooter, maybe things will change. Um, and that's all well and good and I can kind of understand that. Um, but I don't see how this specific person is going to be the right fit. And that's perspective, right? So, and again, I didn't intend to dive into politics, but I, I sort of did. But it's still about perspective. The same thing with religion, right? All religions, um, and I saw a comedian a long time ago when I was younger. I can't even remember who it was. But he said, you know what amazes me? All these wars that are fought about religion. I don't understand how that's even possible. How can any of them lose because they all have God on their side, right? Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, huh? Right? Um, it's all about perspective. 
If you are a Catholic or a Christian, you believe in this one God and that Jesus Christ came down and he died for your sins and he's your savior and blah de blah de blah de blah right? There's a heaven, there's a hell. If you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. And on and on and on and on. And then inside those faiths, there's the, this is the right way to be faithful, and this is the wrong way to be faithful. It's okay to be gay. It's not okay to be gay. It's okay to have gay marriage. It's not okay to have gay marriage. It's okay to have an abortion. It's not okay to have an abortion. (sighs) And it's all about perspective. It's all about how you were raised, what you believe, experiences that have happened in your life that inform your decisions, the choices you make, and the way that you view things. But you're both looking at the same religion. And that's the crazy thing. And that's where I think people have such a hard time. And it's so hard to take that step back and go, okay, I see it this way. You see it that way. We're both looking at the same religion, that we're both looking at the same thing, right? It's almost like um, looking at, uh, let's say you're looking at um, my, my dog. My dog's a mixed breed dog, okay? It's, she's an Akita and a shepherd mix, and she looks a little bit like both, right? Let's say you're both looking at the dog, and one of you says, that's an Akita. And the other one says, no, it's a shepherd. It's an Akita. It's a shepherd. It's an Akita and it's a shepherd. And you decide to get into this big fight over what kind of dog my dog is, You're both looking at the same fucking dog. It's the same dog. But you see it differently for whatever reasons and you refuse to see the other person's side. And that is where it becomes a problem. Without being able to step back and realize that your perspective on something is not the same as someone else's, that's where arguments happen, wars get fought, violence ensues, Countries divide, right? <clears throat> because maybe you're both right, right? I can look at Donald Trump and say categorically, I do not agree. I do not think he's a good president. But I can step back from my perspective long enough to look at someone else and understand that they have a different perspective of how they see Donald Trump. I don't understand it, I don't get it. <clears throat> But I know why I don't get it. My perspective is not the same as theirs. My upbringing was not the same as theirs. My background is not the same as theirs. My education is not the same as theirs. My business acumen is not the same as theirs. My race, my religion, my hair color, whatever. It's not the same as theirs. So I can understand why they would have a different opinion than me. I don't feel... I don't agree, but I'm not going to sit there and tell them that you are wrong and you're horrible and how I'm not going to do that. They have that right to their opinion, to that belief. And the thing that astonishes me is when people like they completely think that if they rage at the top of their lungs, if they scream, if they post in all caps, if they Um, just go on and on and on and on that they will convert me into believing what they believe. I recently got into a nice little Facebook tirade with a friend of mine on Facebook. Okay. Now there's two different friends who came on this post. The first friend is someone who I used to work with. She's more of an acquaintance. We weren't really best friends. We worked together for a little while. She's a nice lady. Um, And I've enjoyed seeing her and her family and and all of the things, you know, in her life through Facebook. Um, But that's really the only way that we would keep in touch, right? She lives in another state. Um, And it's not like we call each other on the phone. So really, we're only friends through Facebook because we used to know each other back in the day type of thing. Um, And then another friend who, uh, same situation, used to work together, um, reconnected back through Facebook. And, you know, we chat. Two totally different people. Um, They sort of have the same viewpoints. They don't always agree with my viewpoints, which is totally fine. Um, But they handle the situation two different ways. Um, I posted something on my Facebook feed about how I felt about something about Donald Trump. One friend came on and basically called me stupid said, do you really not understand what he was saying here? And da 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 like, just did it in a way where it was kind of insulting, like, 
trying, like, consulting my intelligence. Do you not get that? Do you not understand? Yeah, I got it. I, I got it. But I don't agree, right? So right off the gate, talking down to me and treating me like I'm stupid or that I don't understand something and, and just sort of being very condescending about it, it's not the best way to get on. Like, you're not going to get off on the right foot with me, first of all. <clears throat> so that bothered me. And, you know, I replied and I said, you know, look, yes, I get it. Do you understand that I feel this way? Da, 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 da. And she'd already kind of got my back up. And then she responded in some fashion. And then my other friend came on and stated his opinion. <clears throat> and in doing so, basically preached to me about various different things, about oh, how um, Hillary Clinton was this and bad and, and her husband was a dog and blah, 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 blah. And at that point, I had had it. I said, look, this is my Facebook feed. And I don't go onto your Facebook feeds and tell you that, y you know, you're dumb for supporting Trump. I don't go on your Facebook feeds and the things that you post and say that you're a horrible person or you're stupid because you don't get this or blah, blah, blah. There are many things that people post on their pages that I do not agree with that I will happily look at, shake my head at, and keep scrolling without the need to feel like without the need to go on their page and try and convert them or try and explain to them why they are wrong or try and tell them that they're stupid for what they think, okay? I do not go on your page and tell you that you're dumb for believing in an invisible sky fairy, okay? I don't believe, I don't go onto your page and tell you that I think that marriage is an archaic principle and that you're stupid forever getting married. I congratulate you on your marriage and I move on, right? I don't do any of those things. You will believe what you believe because it's your perspective. Now, I'm happy to have an open debate and I'm happy to talk to you about policy and why I agree or disagree with certain things and how I feel about certain things. However, I will never, not once, disrespect you enough to say that you're dumb for thinking that what you think, that you are wrong for believing what you believe. I will never disrespect you in that fashion. And I certainly will not go onto your page to try and convert you to believe something that you don't believe. That is not okay. It's not okay. I don't want you coming to my, I was like, that is akin to me walking into your front door, walking through your door into your living room and trying to explain to you why you're stupid for being Catholic or why you're dumb for believing in Trump or why marriage is ridiculous and you should have never done it, right? Like, that's not okay. It's not okay for me to take my perspective and the reason I believe things and try and convert and change your perspective to match my own because it won't happen. Not like that. You can't go to somebody and make them believe. I mean, that's one of the biggest issues that people have with like ISIS, right? And the radical Islamists. That's the thing is you're, they want everyone to believe their religion. And if you don't, then you are supposed to die. That's what happens when you try and force your viewpoint onto someone else. It causes conflicts and it causes problems, right? So it's one of those things. And it did. It ended badly, you know, and she got very offended and upset. And she's like, well, I can't believe you, you went off on me like that. And I'm like, look, just don't try and convert me, period. Don't try and convert me. Um, I'm happy to debate topics with you. I'm happy to talk to you about things, but don't come on my page and tell me that I'm stupid or t and act like I don't know what I'm talking about or, or treat me like I'm dumb or talk down to me. I will not tolerate that. It's not okay. Um, it's not okay to belittle people for thinking what they think, right? It's not okay. Um, there's many things in this world that I do not understand and I do not agree with um, and I think are blatantly evil. I think that it's wrong racism flat out is wrong. I don't think that it's okay. And I do not understand it. But again, it's a matter of perspective. I was not raised in that fashion. I wasn't raised to think that one color was better than another. I was not brought up in an environment that fostered that, right? So I can't wrap my head around it because my life and my experiences and my perspective have not created that. 
right? So I can look at somebody who is racist and go, I can't believe or understand how you can hate someone simply because their skin is a different color. To me, that's as dumb as thinking someone is um, inferior because their eyes are blue instead of green, or their hair is red instead of brown, or they like the the Patriots instead of the Broncos, which I still don't agree with and I think is wrong and anybody should know better. <laughs> but that's just because I'm a Broncos fan and I don't like the Patriots. Um, but I don't hate somebody just because they like the Patriots. I think that they're seriously, seriously misled in life, but that doesn't mean I hate them. <laughs> I don't agree that doesn't mean that you're a bad person but I can't understand that type of just blind hatred I don't so going back to perspective and 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 parenting and and co-parenting and and things of that nature um it's something that's hard when it hits close to home like that when when parenting and so I struggle with this on a pretty regular basis with my ex um my perspective of parenting and my experience of parenting is far different than what he experienced. Um, I grew up differently than he grew up. Um, his childhood was not a, a fun one and it was not um, always a loving one. It was There was a lot of very bad things that happened to him in his childhood. And so I can understand how that would inform and shape how he parents now. Um, Whereas mine was a very loving, very supportive, um, you know, I grew up as a daddy's girl. I was raised by my dad and I grew up with a dad who I never once questioned whether he was going to be there for me. I never once questioned that he would support me. I never once questioned if he would show up to any of my events. I never, nothing, nothing. Like my dad was like this, like he was on a pedestal, right? And when he fell off that pedestal, it was devastating, right? Because he, you know, people are human, right? When you find out things about, but that's, I mean, every child has this lofty vision of their parents. And then when you find out they're human beings and they've made mistakes, you're kind of like, uh, right? You, <laughs> it's sort of a letdown, right? Um, but it, it's my, my experience with my father was one where it was, it was great, right? I didn't have that feeling like my dad would let me down ever. And so with my daughter and watching the experiences that she's having with her father for a really long time, it was really hard for me to not Like, I couldn't take in his perspective. I couldn't see it from anything other than my perspective. And it is really, really difficult, especially with something like people are like they're passionate about politics and religion. It's important to them and everything. Right. But our children are our weak spot. Right. They are the thing that will bring out the most passionate response and they will. I mean, we will have blinders on. It will be, you know, this is my baby and God forbid you hurt my baby or or, or do anything to, to my child and my perspective of my child. And it's very, very focused and it doesn't alter very easily. Right. Um, so my perspective of my parenting was always bam, it was set. And my perspective of how a father should be was set. Right. I wanted my daughter to have the experience with her father that I had with mine. And because my ex could not meet that expectation, it was bad. Like the way I, and and I still struggle with this. Like to this day, I still want, because I want that for her. I want him to be her superhero. I want him to be the person that she comes crying to when someone hurts her feelings or, or she's upset or when she, you know, goes on her first date or, or, or her boyfriend breaks up with her. Like, I want him to be the guy, you know, as much as I want her to come to me. I want her to have that relationship with him, too. And right now, I know that it's not there. And so it's hard for me with her because I 
I know how much she wants to have that relationship with her father and I know how much she's not getting it and our daughter is so stinking smart that it's like that I'm it's like I'm watching that bridge burn and it's really really hard it's really hard um and when I talk to her about it and she says, you know, well, I just, you know, I don't understand why dad doesn't do this or I don't understand why this happens with dad or, you know, um, and I ask her and I say, honey, you need to talk to your daddy about these things. You need to have the conversation with him. And the first words out of her mouth are, he doesn't care. That kills me. Because I know he does care. But I also know that he has a really hard time articulating that. I know that he has a hard time with the loving father thing because I just don't know that he ever really experienced it. Not the way I did. I don't know if he had that kind of relationship with his father or his stepdad where he could have that open relationship, where he had someone to talk to and it was a safe thing. I, you know, and I don't know any of that. Um, I only know the bad, you know, that, it, that there was some bad. So when I'm talking to my daughter, you know, I try and kind of relate that. I'm like, baby, you, you, you know, you got to keep trying with your dad. You have to understand that. Um, there's a lot of times when your dad, he has a hard time with stuff like that. He has a hard time talking about things that are emotional or he has a hard time, you know, um, you know, getting into the lovey dovey, touchy feely stuff. Like sometimes he just doesn't know. I said, you have to help him know how to relate to you. You have to help him with that because he doesn't quite always understand it. Um, and he's never had a child, much less a little girl. So it's not like he's been through this before. So you got to help him. You got to work with him. And I said, you know, and sometimes you also have to understand that your dad is like 12. And so <laughs> he's on a lot of levels. He's still like a really adolescent boy. <laughs> um, and sometimes you have to deal with him in that aspect too. Um, but that's that perspective. But it is. It's super hard for me because there's always that part of me that wants to just jump. And I still do. I'm human. I still slip. And I'm still like, hey, what the hell, man? Like, you know, why can't you, why can't you just be this way? Why can't you just do this? Right? Um, why can't you just see it from my perspective? Why can't you understand? Right? Um, and that's frustrating, too, because I think that he really struggles with it. He doesn't understand a lot of times why I feel the way I feel about certain things because he didn't experience it. And I have to remember that he can't see things from my point of view because he never lived what I lived. He didn't go through what I went through. So he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand that crippling fear of something potentially happening to your child again because he's never almost lost a child. Right. He doesn't understand that feeling. He never had to see his child laying in a bed almost on death's door, right? Like, he didn't go through that, so he doesn't understand. And he can't, right? If you haven't lived it, you can't. I never lived through an abusive childhood, so I can't understand it. I can't understand what it does to you. But I can understand that it makes your perspective different than mine. And that oftentimes helps me have a better relationship with my ex. I mean, it's not great. We're not friends. It's just we, we talk when we need to and that's it, right? And, and I'm cool with that. That's good for me um, because I don't want anything more. Um, but when I do talk to him and when we do get into these very touchy subjects and the things that have happened and things that come up, um, it... It's very hard sometimes to deal with someone who won't try and see your perspective or won't at least understand that your perspective is different. Um, so you you just kind of got to, it's almost like dealing with another child, right? And I know that sounds condescending and jerkish, but it sort of is, right? Like you have to talk with them the way you're talking with a child. I have to deal with my ex a lot of the ways that I have to deal with my son that has a brain injury, right? Because it's almost exactly the same. 
right? You know, I see things the way I see things and I'm angry because you won't believe me or you won't agree with me or you won't go along with me and I refuse to see things from your side of, of the fence. So it's really hard when you can't have that other side compromise and, and work with you as well. But um, the more that you, and I've done posts about this in the past, the more that you do that and you show them that courtesy and you show them that respect and you try and work with that that in mind of, I'm coming at this from a different way than you are. And I understand that. Once you have that, it makes it easier to deal with the situation a lot of times. And it helps you because then it it starts kind of boiling over to the other person, right? If they see you doing that and you're working with them, then, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know if you ever did an experiment like this when you were a kid. We did it in school and it was sort of like a social experiment. I don't remember what it was. Might have been like in theater or something. I can't remember. But where it was, one person was supposed to yell really, really like yell, like be very vocal and loud. And the other person was supposed to talk really quietly. And no matter what happened, you were supposed to continue talking quietly. And as you kept talking quietly, the person who was yelling would sort of come down and start quieting down in order to be able to hear you. And then you would both be sort of on the same level. And it was an interesting experiment because you knew that you were only supposed to talk quietly. You weren't supposed to raise your voice. No matter what happened, you were supposed to remain quiet. But the other person didn't know that. The other person only knew that they were supposed to start out yelling and try and have a conversation. They didn't know, they weren't told you can't change your pitch or your tone. You just have to start out yelling. And it sort of, it brought them down. So it's sort of like if you have somebody who's, and it's, you'll see it all the time. When somebody's really, really angry, if you stay calm, it helps them calm, right? Um... So the same thing sort of applies, right, with the perspective and and if you can come at the person and and just understand that their perspective is different than yours, what they see is different than what you see, what they've experienced is different than what you've experienced, then a lot of times you can sort of, you may not always agree, you may not always come to an agreement, but at least you can come to sort of a center ground where you can agree to disagree, realize that you won't always understand each other's point of view, but you recognize that the other person has a different point of view. And sometimes that's the easiest and best way to come to compromise and deal with a, a situation that's that's volatile. So um, just kind of keep that in mind if ever you have. And, and it works pretty much on all levels, like I said, because everything in your life is about perspective. The way you view your life is through a set of lenses that have developed over the years based on your experiences in your life. And your lenses are different than your neighbor, your kid, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your friends, your exes your teachers, your boss, everybody, right? Everybody has a different set of lenses that they wear. And no one set of lenses is the same. So you're not always going to have the same responses. You may be similar, but it's not all the same perspective. That's why some people can agree on certain things but disagree on others, right? Some people agree on, you know, the subject of gay marriage while they at the, si at the same time disagree on abortion rights or gun control or, you know, whatever, any of the other hot button topics that are out there, right? Um, and it is. It's all about perspective and how you view things and what your experiences have, have brought you to in life. The point is, is to be open to understanding that other people's perspective is different, not necessarily right or wrong, just different. And that's very important. So I hope that you found this podcast helpful and that it has helped you with something, anything, even if it was just to, you know, take your mind off something like your transmission going out for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Um, we will be back hopefully in the next couple of weeks with another podcast. I'm not sure what that one's going to be on, but, um, until then, don't forget you are absolutely amazing. You are a rock star and you are kicking ass in life and, um, yeah, take care and we'll talk again soon. Bye. Thanks for joining me today for the single mom success podcast. 
Be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms, and if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, head on over to thesinglemomblog.com to make sure you never miss out on our most recent posts and podcasts. Thanks again, and never forget, you rock.